good people of YouTube, Mountbatten here, and today I'm answering a question I've been getting asked a lot more on stream recently, and it's normally something to the effect of, hey Sea Lord, I'm either about to grind down my first cruiser line, or I'm about to grind down my first cruiser line in a while, what line should I go down in this game in 2023? It's a very good question. Cruisers are a very important class in the game. They're the main uh, DPM dealers in this game and in my opinion are probably the second most important class after the destroyers. Keeping your cruisers alive is one main job of a battleship. Keeping your cruisers and your TTs alive that is. So what we're going to do in this video, I'm going to briefly go over each nation's cruiser line, the light and the heavy line, or the battle cruiser line and the cruiser line in the case of the French, and give you guys my brief two cents on each one. But if you just want the short answer to your, to your question of what line should I go down, in, in my opinion at least, that would be the German heavy cruisers. Why? Well, the German heavy cruisers, in my mind, especially the higher tier ones, they are kind of timeless. The Hindenburg has stood the test of time. It's getting up there in age in terms of ship lines in this game. And yet the Hindenburg is still a great cruiser. It has a, an amazing spot in randoms. It has a good spot in ranks brawls and those types of modes and it even does still get brought to things like cots and clan battles although again not as much as it used to but every now and then you still will see it show up compared to some cruiser lines that never get to see their day in competitive as at all because they just don't have the qualities needed the german cruisers have a good rate of fire again especially when you start getting up to higher tier they have the improved german he pins they have amazing ap they have great alpha and it hits hard as hell too and high maneuverability too if you really want to build into it and once again you get to the higher tier ones they're quite tanky i mean hindenburg is known as battleship hindenburg for a reason plus they have a ton of utility hydro torpedoes and well back in the day you used to have pretty good aa not so much anymore today so there's all around excellent cruisers that in my mind just have done very well with their age and still continue to continue to do well today especially if just looking for a cruiser line for randoms the germans would be my go-to ones to start off with now let me just get this out here at the front too as a disclaimer pretty much all the cruisers suck at mid-tier I don't think there's very many cruisers in this game that won't get absolutely vibe checked at mid tier by higher tier battleships. It's just a fact of the game. It is what it is. So that's the German cruisers. That's the short answer. If you want to know my, my opinion, that's it. But let's go ahead and move on to the others. I'm just going to go on the list of them and port. This list is in no particular order. So let's go ahead and get started with the Japanese. Now, the Japanese cruisers, you get two choices here the light cruiser line or the heavy cruiser line. The heavy cruiser line is made up of ships like the Aoba, Mayoko, Magami, Ibuki, and the Zhao, the tier 10. Now the Zhao, in um, my opinion, is a pretty darn good tier 10. I know a lot of players complain that she's been nerfed too hard or she needs to be buffed. They, well, they have buffed her quite a bit recently, and in my opinion, she's pretty darn good still today. The Japanese cruisers are excellent off-flank kiters. They have longer range torpedoes. They have excellent Japanese HE Alpha along with their uh, pins as well. Because again, they, they do have larger-ish guns for their tier, but not massive by any, by any stretch of the imagination in today's World of Warships. Along with a pretty decent fire rate and a high fire chance. So for what they have, the guns are really excellent in the Japanese cruisers. They're also pretty darn comfortable to aim with at longer ranges as well. A great way to play the Japanese cruisers is just go to the flank that looks like it's kind of falling apart and start kiting. You have longer range torpedoes, so just throw those at the enemy ship, at the enemy ships, throw HE in their face, start fires. The AP is also not bad as well, though it's not as good as something like the uh, Germans AP or especially the Americans AP. But if someone does slip up and show your broadside, load some AP and just shove it into their citadel and they will fill it, especially if they're a light or another heavy cruiser. Battleships too, you can aim for their 
their extremities, their bow, their stern, their um, superstructure, and do quite well at the AP. But with those guys, you're going to want to mostly, mostly stick to the HE. They're also quite stealthy, especially again once you start getting up to higher tier. Um, you can get these ships concealment down really, really low, which makes it a lot easier to play with their torpedoes and such. And you can very easily dictate the terms of your own engagement with the Japanese heavy cruisers. With the Japanese light cruisers, the light cruisers are really odd. Like I said in my review of the of the Yodo, they are still pretty much heavy cruisers with the way that they play because they have a very slow rate of fire. They have a ton of guns, but the gun's alpha is pretty low. But through the high number of guns, they still feel like heavy cruisers because by the time you get to the Yodo, it feels like you're doing about the same damage as you would with like the Zao, but with more guns. And they do also have longer range torpedoes and improved torpedo launch angles over the heavy cruisers. They get the turning mechanics, so you can get a little bit better torpedo angles with them. The heavy cruisers have kind of awkward um, torpedo angles to where you basically have to show broadside, which will get you slapped with their armor. Now, the Japanese light cruisers have even worse armor than the Japanese heavy cruisers, so you will get vibe checked if you do slip up in the light cruisers. The light cruisers in my opinion don't really get good until the tier 10 so and it's my recommendation that if you're looking for a first cruiser line to start down it's not the japanese light cruisers come back later once you've grounded down a line or two if you're interested in these guys other than that i would advise avoiding them until you're more experienced okay up next we have the american cruisers and we have a heavy and light line here so we'll start the heavy line the des moines line these guys are again some of the oldest ships in the game they've been around for quite some time and in my opinion for random battles they've held up relatively well uh, their method of play isn't really easy to pull off anymore because these guys are island huggers. The, the light cruisers are too. You need to play around the islands, hug the islands, and play relatively close to the cap as well. Especially with these guys, because these guys have radar. Uh, both the light and heavy line do. But again, we'll focus on the, on the uh, heavy line for right now. They have radar, stay near the cap, use your good DPM, with, especially with the, with the Des Moines. The Des Moines is a fantastic tier 10 cruiser in my mind. And you have a just absolutely the amazing reload time on these heavy cruiser guns with the improved American AP which means that these guys guns will bite at angles well where other guns of so, uh, similar caliber won't and plus you get the super heavy AP which gives you that improved AP pin angle so it hits a lot harder too than you would expect so many times have I been shoot apart by a Des Moines in a battleship when I thought I was safe don't make that mistake so you use that play close to the caps hug an island to protect your broadside from damage because these guys' armor is not that great. Any battleship she's your shied in an American cruiser, trust me, as a battleship main, there's not much more I like to see other than a broadside American cruiser. There's, you know, one or two other cruisers that we'll get to that I do also like to see broadside, but especially the Americans because you know you're going to citadel them. So you got to stay to your side, hug your island waifu, and stay protected. Use your radar to keep the DDs in the cap spotted. Use your great DPM to deal with them. Uh, the HE is also pretty decent as well. There's not many cruisers in the game that can win a bow on fight with a Des Moines because, again, you just load HE and sling it in their face, and, well, they're going to burn down quite easily. Now, the American light cruisers, these guys play, play pretty similar to the American heavy cruisers. Again, like I said, you want to hug the islands. The Wooster, the tier 10, has just an amazing degree of utility with all the freaking consumables that you get on on the Wooster. Not only do you get that American radar on the Wooster, but you also get various other consumables such as the Hydroacoustic Search, DFAA, and you can still swap out your radar with uh, a fighter or a spotter if you really want to for some reason, but again a very high degree of utility here on the Wooster. Now the armor is even less good on these ships because well they're light cruisers. So, yeah, you really don't want to get caught out in the open with the American light cruisers at all. So, these guys, if you like playing in the open, not the ships for you. If you like playing closer to the cap, hugging the islands, I would say these are ships that I would go with. I would definitely go with the heavy cruiser line first, and then come back to the light cruiser line. The light cruiser line isn't very forgiving. The Des Moines line is a little bit more forgiving because the armor is a little bit better there, but again, still not a ship you want to be caught out in the open with. All right. Next up on our 
on our list we have the Soviet cruisers. Ah yes, the Soviet cruisers. We have two lines here to choose from. We have the heavy cruiser line that will get you the Petropavlovsk, and then the light cruiser line that will get you the Nevsky, uh, the, the Nevsky. Now the Soviet cruisers, again we'll start the heavy cruiser line. Uh, these guys, well, they're played like a lot of the other Soviet large ships. You play bow in, you're incredibly tanky, you do get radar, but the radar on the Soviet cruisers is longer range, 12 kilometers, versus the American radar, which is normally around 10 kilometers once you get up to higher tier, but it lasts a lot shorter. Typically with enough time for you yourself to get maybe one or two salvos off, and your team to get about one, maybe two salvos off as well once that six second timer comes off. So the Soviet cruisers bow in, don't show your sides. You will get Citadel. The Petra Pavlovsk is not the Petra Pavlovsk it used to be. They've raised her up out of the water quite a bit now, so she's incredibly easy to Citadel. Uh, the Petra Pavlovsk also, too, they did replace the Mosva with her, and in my opinion, the Mosva is a better cruiser overall, but that's my opinion, because her guns can actually hit crap at range where the Petros can't. But from Bowen, the Petros guns hit very hard. They have excellent AP. It's the Soviet bias AP, so don't show broadside to it, especially from within about 12 or so kilometers. Now, going over to the light cruiser line, the Nevsky is a lot. <laughs> The Netsky is great at kiting. It's got Soviet armor in the middle, so when you stay angled, you can bounce a hell of a lot of crap in the Nevsky, uh, which makes it a popular pick for things like competitive as well. Um, you can stay angled and bounce a fair amount of battleship guns with the Nevsky. They have to try and hit your bow or stern, which at range is... Mm. You can also get the Nevsky's range out to 20 kilometers, which, yeah, it's actually usable at that range too because the Soviet shells have the Soviet ballistics to it, so they're great at that range. Now, is playing a radar cruiser that far away from the cap a good thing? No, but it can be done if need be done. But again, you don't have to play like that. You can play it closer and it's very, very good for that as well. So that's the Soviet cruisers. Um, as far as taking these guys first, uh, yeah, the heavy cruisers, maybe the light cruisers. Again, wait until you get more experience. Light cruisers in general tend to be less forgiving than heavy cruisers as a uh, general guide for you for making your decisions. All right. Up next in our list, we have the, well, we already went over the German cruisers, but then we have the British cruisers. So let's start the, with the heavy cruiser line here as well. The British heavy cruisers are, well, pff, they have HE, unlike the light cruisers, and they do get British HE. So it's higher than average alpha, very good fire chance. And at the higher tier tiers, they do get an improved hill, with the Goliath getting outright a super hill. Uh, the Goliath, if you're wondering about her, she's great for random battles farming. Um, in my opinion, at one point in time, she was probably the best cruiser for the meta, uh, with the the old lighthouse build Goliaths, with the you know the ability to just cockroach with the ship because you couldn't die with that improved hill. Now. The light cruiser line is a bit of a different story, as I'm sure most of you battleship players out there know. Uh, they're very explodey. You see a broadside Minotaur, a Neptune, or an Edinburgh, and they're probably going to die. Now, unlike the Goliath and the heavy cruisers, they don't just get an improved hill, but a super hill, starting from higher tier on up. Uh, I believe uh, tier 9 and 10 get the, the, uh, the super hill. Now, they don't get a uh, HE, but what they get is an AP with improved pin angles and an insane fire rate once you get to the Tier 9, into the Tier 10, to the Neptune, and to the Minotaur. The ability to just rain a never-ending rain of AP shells down upon the enemy ships is, well, quite quite easy to do in the Neptune and in the Minotaur. That's where you get your, your damage out of. Sure, you might be overpinning them because you don't have HE, but when the sky is full of your AP shells, what are they going to do? Now, both the heavy and light cruiser line for the uh, 
British do get the single drop torpedoes, which is very cool. You can drop the torpedoes by individual tube rather than the entire rack, which does mean there's quite a few situations where maybe you're hugging an island or you're expecting them to come around the corner. You can conga line the torpedoes in a perfect line to where they all hit rather than, of course, having to shove some of your torpedoes into the island. So that's a very, very nice feature of the British light cruisers and heavy cruisers as well. Um, again, I would recommend the British heavy cruisers over the light cruisers. The light cruisers are definitely definitely a um acquired skill that you have to acquire after uh, after playing the game for some time they're very slow to stop there's so many times you'll see the minotaur the neptune player pop his smoke because he got detected and the dude's trying to stop but for some reason the ships take years to stop in the water and they just go ahead and sail on out on out of their smoke and they're kind of stuck there and then they they die now the lights can swap out the uh well the neptune and the minotaur can swap out their their uh, smoke for radar if you want to play it like that giga chad radar build minotaur is a thing uh but the heavies don't get smoke or radar at all so there is that all right up next in our cruiser list is the French cruisers. Now the French do have the heavy cruiser line and the battle cruiser line. We'll start with the battle cruiser line. The battle cruiser line, in my opinion, that's the Marseille, the Brest, and the Cherbourg, are among some of the best cruisers in the game right now. Uh, these are basically um, what if Dunkirk had a line, essentially. <laughs> uh, these ships are great, highly maneuverable. They get reload booster. You get the fantastic French AP with um, your Dunkirk caliber and above guns. I believe the line goes for them. Just double check here in port before I tell y'all wrong. From the Dunkirk's caliber, which is 300 and what, 305? Yeah, 305 up to the 330 millimeter guns of the Marseille. So, yeah. They're, they're pretty big guns to have on cruisers. And again, you get the reload booster with them. But these guys' guns are, of course, all forward of the superstructure uh, rather than the traditional um, cruiser turret layout. So you do have to show your front to get these guns on target, which means a lot of people think that you should play them like tank destroyers in World of Tanks, where you just hunker down and uh, bow tank forever. Y you don't do that. You stay on the move, keep your guns in the fight. Don't sit still. If you sit still, you die because the armor is not that good. There's, they still are quite uh, squishy. They are cruisers, not battleships. So you need to use their great maneuverability and stay on the move. And these guys are great. Now, the Henri line, the Henry line, they are more of traditional cruisers. Um, the way I play them is very similar to the way I play the Japanese cruisers. Go to the all flank and basically bait out the shots. They are very maneuverable. Engine boost. They also get the main battery reload booster as well. That's a pickup they got some time ago. And Henry, in my opinion, is still a fantastic ship. I know some players swear up and down that it's a garbage ship, but in my opinion, it's not. Um, still quite maneuverable. You can juke pretty well with it when you got the engine boost going. Has very large guns. Used to be the biggest guns on a cruiser in the game with 240 millimeter guns. Uh, the French HE is really decent. The AP is even better. Some slips up as your broadside and you're in a Henry. Load that AP, pop that reload booster, make their day miserable. Also gets torpedoes as well up and down the line. Uh, I would say about medium range on average. The Henry gets 10 kilometers, so that's a little bit more usable than others. So a great line here. Um, with either of these guys, you know, if you're more of a battleship player, the uh, battle cruiser line is an excellent line to kind of bridge the gap between battleships and cruisers. So that's one that I would maybe recommend going down uh, that line first before you check out the rest of the cruisers in general. All right, on from the French, we go now to... The Italians, the pasta boys. So, uh, Venezia, we only have one Italian cruiser line at the moment. I'm sure Wargaming is, is planning on changing that here in the future, the way that they've been going. So, the Venezia line, um, these guys, I know I said that the mid-tier cruisers are all kind of painful, but the Italian cruisers are seems to be exceptionally painful, as with the Italian battleships, because, of course, they had to balance these guys around SAP. Sap is a munition type that's unique to the Italians and a couple of other premium ships at the moment. Uh, it's basically HE that doesn't have a fire chance but has amazing alpha. You can chunk the ever-living crap out of lightly armored ships or like superstructures, uh, extremities of battleships quite easily with Sap. And because of that, the mid-tier cruisers are mm, 
low rate of fire, very low survivability. Once you get to tier 8, it really does start to pick up with the Italians. And the Venezia is a fantastic tier 10 premium, um, uh, not tier 10 premium, tier 10 tech line cruiser in my mind. Her, her guns, man, they, they nerfed her, her guns because she got a lot of them. She got 15 guns at tier 10 with sap. And they are heavy cruiser guns. They hurt a lot. Uh, back in, was it season 19 or season 9 of Clan Battles? I can't rem remember which one exactly it was. Uh, it was, the, it was the, the Clan Battles right after the Venezia came out. These things were everywhere, dude. And if you were unfortunate enough to play like a Stalingrad or a battleship against a, a side of Venezia, these things could chunk you for like 20k through your superstructure with their sap. It was in friggin' insane. So not only do they have sap, but they do also have the exhaust smoke consumable where you can pop it and you can be going full tilt and the smoke screen stays up with you and as long as you're in that smoke and there's no radar around or no one's two kilometers away from you you'll stay undetected the venezia is also really well armored uh, the tier 8 and the tier 9 the armor does get better than the mid-tier ones and they also have longer ish range torpedoes uh by that i mean 13 kilometers the max which you'd be surprised how much that still comes into play with uh with with kiting because you know if someone's coming towards you you know they will get closer to you you throw torpedoes at them obviously uh they're probably going to run into them if they aren't paying attention and you'd be surprised how many times i'll just throw a random set of torpedoes out in the venezia and i do snag a hit or two with it not to mention the ap is pretty good as well although i would just stick with the sap unless you know 100 percent for sure you can sit it all the ever loving crap out of whatever's showing you broadside like a light cruiser pops out yeah definitely if you got ap in the tubes let it rip it works quite well so Venezia line, pretty good line, one uh, that I would recommend for randoms, and uh, it kind of has, it it has its place in ranked. Uh, clan battles doesn't really seem to be too many of them around anymore. Alright, up next, after the Italians, we have the Pan-Asian line, which is uh, something. <laughs> if you like light cruisers, boy, these are very light cruisers. So, it's essentially a line of Austins, not Austins, um, of Atlantas, if you will. Basically, light cruisers that border on, you know, very large destroyers. They have destroyer caliber guns, a lot of them rapid firing guns, with, you know, the, the typical Atlanta style of gameplay. <laughs> Very much the same what I said about the American line still applies here. You want to find an island. These guys do get smoke screens, so you can, you know, kind of smoke yourself up and dock it from there. But I, I wouldn't sit in that smoke screen because uh, battleships will blind fire it and torpedoes will eventually get chunked your way as well. On top of having a, s a large number of small rapid firing guns, these guys do also get deep water torpedoes with the torpedo reload booster. And the tier 10, the Janan, can absolutely crap out just... An insane wall of torpedoes. You get two sets of torps per side. Um, with the re with the reload booster, you can make a wall of skill that would make a Shimakaze very, very jealous. Now they are deep water torpedoes, so that does mean that they're only hitting cruisers and and battleships. So destroyers will be uh, spared from this wall of skill, unlike with the uh, Japanese DDs. That is, so. Um, they are very light. The Janine does get a, a heal, and I believe the Tier 9 does as well, but from there on down, you do not. So that is, mm, again, mid-tier cruisers kind of suck for exploding. But they all do also have better than average AA. They can mount a DFAA as well if you want to. Like I said, they, they do get a smoke screen as well. But these guys, if you're looking for a first-time cruiser line, definitely not the one for you because, again, you slip up. It's very easy to get vibe checked in these things and be back to port. All right, and finally, we have, if my uh, port would like to load up, the Dutch cruisers. So these guys are something, all right? So they are essentially a line of almost battleships if you, if you will accept especially from um tier 9 and tier 10 i mean the tier 10 is literally the dutch design that the uh germans basically said here uh just copy my homework here for Scharnhorst and change it up a little bit and it it's it's just Scharnhorst. so the dutch line is a very weird line they do get the airstrikes armament which means they can call in planes to uh, drop a, a bunch of bombs on the opponent's forehead. And they were designed, according to Wargaming, to discourage island camping. Yet, they're great island campers. 
their HE, while on paper, doesn't look too great. They're actually really good at starting fires for some reason. And the AP, once you get close enough to where the, the dispersion isn't an issue, is amazing. You, you can absolutely nuke somebody if they slip up and show your broadside and you're in, in one of these ships. So it's very weird that they're great for holding islands because they have amazing HE and amazing AP from close range, and they have the airstrikes to discourage others from doing the same. Very weird, weird setup indeed. Now the armor isn't too great. Um, these are very large ships, so they attract about the same amount of attention as battleships do, and their armor is not battleship armor. So that does suck once you get the attention of uh, other ships. They are very weak to HE spam as well. And overall... Uh, I do agree that this line's kind of, uh, the tier 10's pretty good in my opinion, but definitely not something you want to start out with. So guys, that's my two cents on each line. Again, just a quick overview of each line if you're trying to decide what cruiser line you like to go up. I do have pretty much, I believe, all these lines covered in previous videos, so you can look that up on my channel if you want a more in-depth look at each line. But guys, if you enjoyed, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on our way to 50,000 subscribers. Just got over 43,000 a few days ago, and I cannot thank you guys enough for that. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday, a wonderful rest of your day. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.